गुड मॉर्निंग सोनकर साहब नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग प्राचार्य साहब नमस्ते नमस्ते एक एक पांच सात मिनट चले एक करता बार 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 काल पहला दिवस नहीं का काल जवरपास अपने क्या पांचे पार्टिशिपेंट्स होते जूम लठराशे व्यूज होते यूट्यूब काल आम इट इज ओपन टू ऑल पब्लिक के एक चांग बच पे कनेक्ट लोक आज अपने सब्जेक्टिव है साइंस अपने विद्यार्थी जे है जो जो एक चारशे पार्टिशिपेंट्स है दोनशे बावन एक्स्ट्रैक है तबियत बरी है पटकन जॉइन वाइस हेलो हाँ बोला जाऊन आलपुर जाऊन आलो ना नाजूक है तब्य स्टेबल है ऑक्सीजन सपोर्ट है नतु सर गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम प्रत्येक दोन मिनिटात
A very good morning to one and all. So shall we start, sir? Oh. It gives me an immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to the dignitary, guests, other delegates to the inaugural ceremony of International Conference on Integrative Nanotechnology Perspective for Multidisciplinary Applications, organized by Red Shikshan Sansa, Anandai Kauke College, Manchur. The Red Shikshan Sansa is a premier institution of education known and honored far and wide, not only at the national level, but at the global level. Let us have a look at the journey of prayer through a documentary on journey of transformation of prayer yesterday, today, and tomorrow. When Maharashtra was reeling under the rigid caste system and illiteracy, Padmabhushan Dr. Karmavir Bhaurav Patil was born on 22nd September 1887 in an orthodox Jain family. In schooling days, though Karmavir Bhaurav Patil was not good in learning, the revolutionary spark in him got refined in the royal palace of Kulhapur, which later proved seminal in exemplary work of education. Dr. Karmavir Bhaurav Patil was an ardent follower of the Satya Shodhak Samaj, founded by Mahatma Jyotiba Phule. On 4th October 1999, in a meeting of Satya Shodhak Samaj at Kale, Karmavir announced the initiation of Raya Shikshan Sanstha, and the foundation was laid by starting a hostel. The Sanstha headquarters was shifted to Satara in Dhaninichi Bagh. While working for Kirloskar, Cooper and Ogle Industries, he travelled through entire Maharashtra and experienced the agonies and exploitation of the farmers and the poor. He realised that the education is the only way to put an end to the suffering of the people. In spite of strong opposition from the orthodox people, Anna started a hostel for the students of all communities at Satara in 1924. Being a true disciple of Rajarshi Shahu Maharaj, Karmir Anna paved the way for social changes by bringing the children from different castes, feeding them and providing education under a roof. On 25th February 1927, Mahatma Gandhiji visited the boarding house. It was named as Shri Chhatrapati Shahu Boarding House by his auspicious hands. On this occasion, Nandev Kulab, a student from Harijan Society, briefed Gandhiji about the work being done by Anna. Seeing the students from different castes studying under one roof, Gandhiji lauded Anna's effort to harvest social change and admitted, What I could not do at Sabarmati, you have done it here in Rayat. Fascinated by the mammoth work, Gandhiji started annual help of rupees 500 to the boarding house. In this pursuit for social change through the education, Karmir Anna was greatly supported by Rajarshi Shahu Maharaj, Maharshi Shinde, Maharshi Karve, Saint Gargya Baba, Bharat Ratna Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar, and many other luminaries. Karmir used to say, if you plan for a year, sow cereals. If you plan for a decade, grow trees and if you plan for a century grow good humans and Bhaurav did the same in his lifetime a work started with mere one student and the budget of rupees 30 later turned out to be a mission Anna started 474 voluntary schools in rural and remote areas of Maharashtra teachers training colleges free and residential schools earn and learn scheme were some of his ambitious projects. He sent students abroad for higher education. However, it was not an easy journey. Caste riots, blind religionalism, 
and disagreements were some dark clouds which surrounded Red Shikshan Sosta from time to time. But Anna withstood these thunderstorms making the Sosta more strong. On this uphill journey, his better half Red Mauli Sau Lakshmibai Bhaurav Patil was the strongest support. During his absence, she would look after the children at the boarding house whom Anna had brought from all corners of Maharashtra. She made every possible sacrifice for the mission. Once, there was nothing left to eat in boarding house and Anna was out of station without any second thought. Vahini mortgaged her Mangal Sutra to feed the children at the boarding house. But all soon, in a cruel move, destiny took away Anna's courage forever leaving him all in a midway. Untimely demise of Vahini, wife of Bhaurav Pati, was a great setback for Anna. He was shattered, yet Anna took over the role of the mother for the children at Red. And Red began to grow and blossom like a banyan tree. It started progressing at an unbelievable pace. Through his struggle, and sacrifices, Anna's Rayat became the Rayat of masses. When Red Shikshan Sanstha was expanding and flourishing in a full swing on 9th May 1959, this modern saint set off on a journey to the cosmos. The great soul departed, leaving behind Sanstha for us to accomplish his mission. Anna's demise left the people thunderstruck with so many questions. What will happen to Rayat? Will the sacred river of education dry up? But since the foundation of Rayat Shikshan Sanstha was laid on the values of hard work and sacrifice, it kept spreading and developing with the same vigor. Following the path shown by Karmavir, former chief minister of Maharashtra, Yashwant Rao Chavan, Vasandada Patil, and former Union Agriculture Minister Sharad Rao Pawar have contributed in the progress of Red Shikshan Sanstha. To know the expanse and development of Red Shikshan Sanstha, let's have a look. Today, 4,52,228 students are taking education in Red Shikshan Sanstha, out of which 2,37,829 students belong to the backward classes. The Sanstha plays an instrumental role in women education. As a result, 2,14,560 girl students are enrolled for the primary to higher studies. 13,148 strong workforce of Sanstha belong to 171 caste of Maharashtra. Out of them, 3,756 are women, which shows Raya Shikshan Sanstha's commitment towards women empowerment. If we consider the expanse of Raya Shikshan Sanstha, then till date it has a total of 751 branches spread over 15 district of Maharashtra and one district of Karnataka. It includes 7 administrative offices, 42 pre-primary schools, 52 primary schools, 441 higher secondary schools, 42 colleges, 7 beard colleges, 91 boarding schools, 8 ashram shalas, 1 RIRD, 3 ITIs and 57 other branches spreading education to masses. Red Shikshan Sanstha runs many schools and colleges in the remotest part of the state where the access to education would have not possible. This year, Red Shikshan Sanstha is celebrating its centenary, providing quality and need-based education has always been remained the utmost priority during the last 99 years. This quality has been certified by the government also. Out of 42 colleges, 7 colleges have A plus grade in NAC, 12 have A grade, 6 are autonomous, 15 are ISO certified, 5 colleges are Center for Potential Excellence and 1 cluster university. RET has given more than 1,135 administrative officers through competitive exam centers of its own. The Sansa have brought new changes, advancements and innovations in education enabling students to withstand future challenges.
to make it possible. The Sansa have signed MOUs with several national and multinational institutions like NSDC, UNDP, Lupin, Tata, Rajiv Gandhi Science Center, BVZ, and Jain Irrigation. Sansa is taking up many projects to tackle with the major problems in agriculture sector. The milestone in our effort is that Red Shikshan Sansta has started three CIII centers, that is, Center for Invention, Innovation, and Incubation, with the help of Tata Science Technology Park, Pune. The seed sown a century ago by Karmur Bhaura Patil has turned into a big banyan tree now. It has set a standard of quality in education and will be scripting new success stories in coming days. Thank you. The institution itself is regarded as a Nobel mission, a Nobel cause, and so endearingly pursued by its founder, Father Karmavi Bhavra Patil. The educator of the educators and his legendary wife, Sir Lashmibai Paula Patti. <laughs> माया 
मधल्या नवसृष्टीचा निर्मित तो ही ठरतो आहे रयते मधुनी नव्या युगाचा माणूस आता ठरतो आहे वटवृक्षाच्या विशालतेचा मोहन फाला पडतो आहे रयते मधुनी नव्या युगाचा पुणे we also have our president of rail section sansa uh, of this program principal dr v s shivankar secretary higher education rail section sansa satara i also would like to welcome our honorable principal dr k g kanade i take this opportunity to welcome convener of this program and the vice principal of our college professor dr a p nikum co-convener professor dr nimbarkar coordinator of this program professor dr s n bolkar organizing secretary professor dr a kale and treasurer professor b b pasani i also extend a very warm welcome to the cdc chairman of our college honorable dilip rao varse patel co minister maharashtra ke cdc member honorable bala saheb panthele sir Rajshikshan Sansa General Body Member Honorable Rajaram Panthiri Sir, Rajshikshan Sansa Coordinating Committee Member Honorable Bala Saheb Bhante Patel Sir, and CDC Member Honorable Uday Bhante Sir. I again extend a very warm welcome to all and to the teachers and student delegates, research scholars, scientists from India and abroad. However, before we proceed, I'm keeping our traditions in mind. I request the dignitaries on dial to offer floral tribute to the idols of Padmavishi Doctor Kanthi Bhola Patel and so Lakshmi Bai Bhola. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now I would like to welcome or uh, invite Honorable Professor Dr. A. B. Nikku, Vice Principal and the Convener of this program, to for the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, madam. Good morning, and very warm welcome to all. Today, in this inaugural function. i would like to welcome chief guest honorable professor dr arvind ratu emeritus scientist ncl pune and president of this function honorable principal dr v s shivankar secretary rail shiksha samstha satara join us virtually and i would also like to welcome principal dr k g kanade all the participants and friends anna sir aute arts commerce and hutatma babu genu science college Mansar organizes hybrid international conference on integrative nanotechnology perspectives for multidisciplinary applications 2022 as one of the important event during Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. Anna Sahib Aute College Mansar was established in 1966. It is one of the leading college in Rai Shikshan Sanstha as well as Savitri Bai Phule Pune University Pune. Our college is recipient of Best College Award, awarded by SPPU Pune. It is also accredited by NAC for third cycle in A grade with CGPA 3.09. There are 70 UG and nine PG courses, which includes physics, chemistry, mathematics, botany, electronic science, and zoology. Two career-oriented courses, 
food processing and quality management, accounting and taxation, two professional courses, BSc Biotechnology and BBA CA, three research centers in botany, chemistry and economics, eight research guides. College has 105 acres of social forest and agricultural land with dense plantation of mango, amla, tamarind, and river tamarind. The theme of the conference is nanotechnology and its applications, which is an emerging field of research. It finds its applications in medicine, electronics and telecommunication, agriculture, biotechnology, composite materials, textile industries, etc. Nanotechnology is going to be a major driving force behind the impending technology revolution in 21st century and hence can be considered as nano century. After declaration of this conference, our team received more than 250 abstracts of research articles. Some are for oral presentation and others for poster presentation. In this pandemic situation, we have decided to collect video clips from the participants. All these abstracts are divided into four groups, namely chemical sciences, physical sciences, life sciences, and authors. In each group, one best presenter award from oral and poster will be selected by expert team. The names will be declared in the respective technical sessions by the chairpersons. Peer reviewed full length papers are published in materials today proceedings. Such a brilliant response from the participants is the sign of success of conference. I will sum up my talk with a couple of lines. Nanotechnology is predicted to have four distinct generations of advancement. We are currently experiencing the first or maybe second generation of nanomaterials. The third and fourth generation materials may be accepted with safe and design concept. I wish best success for conference. Enjoy the technical sessions. Again, I welcome all the dignitaries and friends. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to invite Professor Dr. Kishi Tanaki to introduce the chief guest and president. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank I will give you very brief introductions for today's inaugural guest, Dr. Arvind Nathu. Basically, he has a number of awards. I think uh, during his uh, particular, the as a scientist and also as a particular good administrator, work professor in ISER Pune. He is the senior scientist for 40 years in National Chemical Laboratory. Natu sir know very, very well the Germany. He can write, he can uh, speak, can read German frequently. And that's why the in early research he did in Germany and uh, he has visited to number of the uh, overseas countries. Iser Pune basically for uh, establishing, he has taken number of efforts and also uh, recently to the execution of Iser Tirupati. He is one of the pioneer member. He has uh, served for pharmaceutical industry in India and abroad. He has teaching experience in master and PhD level. He is the lead Indian chemistry Olympiad teams. Basically, he graduated from Pune University with first class, PG from Pune University, first class and second in university. PhD, of course, by Pune University. He has the number of the awards and recipients. I think I will not take too much time, but he is one of the good friends to us. And also he always supports to our red section Sansta. 
who is working for the down road and basically for rural and particular the country sites that is the schools and colleges i will welcome another guest who is the president of these functions is our guide that is the secretary principal dr v s sivankar he is also basically chemist and he has a very good experience in particular teaching also as an administrator as a principal to chatrapati sahu college kolapur and then kbp college of wasi that is autonomous college and last two years he is a the secretary of prayer section sansta with these uh, short introductions i will welcome both of him and all the dignitaries and i will request to all of you please stand up and clap for all these particular the guests thank you very much thank you sir As you know, we have received a good response, and we have received more than two hundred abstracts, and we are still proceeding. So, as so many years, we are publishing the conference abstract book. So, I request all the dignitaries on the dais to inaugurate and officially publish and, and the abstract. And thank you, sir. And we, uh, we will just so now, sir, and Mr. Professor. Yes. I am the uh, very gracious presence of Nathu sir and our president of this program, Dear Shivankar sir. We are going to publish and inaugurate this conference abstract book. Rayat Shikshan Sansthas Anna Sahib Aute College Manchur has always been dynamic in organizing student centric and innovative activities such as webinars, conferences. for holistic development of students the motive of such activities basically is to expose students from diverse background to research in science and inculcate the research temperament in them taking this into consideration honorable principal dr k g kanade has come up with an idea of organizing this international conference entitled integrative nanotechnology perspectives of multidisciplinary approach from 16th January 2022 to 18th January 2022 This conference encompasses various streams of sciences such as chemical sciences physical sciences mathematical sciences and life sciences Apart from this we have also encouraged participation from arts and commerce streams It is our privilege to share that we have received a huge response More than 450 participants have registered for the conference and around 250 participants have submitted their abstracts and showed interest in oral or poster presentations of their research work. This conference is guided by renowned researchers across the globe. On the occasion of this conference, a special public lecture on reforms in new education policy 2020 and comparison between these policies in india and abroad is also organized i am happy to say that in the uh, covid-19 pandemic situations we have not only initiate the online educations through youtube channel as well as the regular online mode but also we have organized the international conference on this recent subject like integrative nanotechnology perspective for multidisciplinary applications 2022 in this conference we have received more than 250 abstract from various subjects like physical science chemical science life science and mathematical science also in this particular the seminar the more than 6 to 10 speaker are from overseas country mostly they are from usa south korea malaysia bulgaria bangladesh like this they are going to guide to our the youngsters to towards the particular these uh, issues which is raised in this particular this seminar i am happy to say that this conference will definitely help to the holistic development of our students thank you it was organized to nurture each stakeholder to make a compassionate and a discerning individual 
through a holistic quality education so as a souvenir we are providing a platform to participants to showcase their research in form of conference abstract book thank you so much sir thank you so much sir after this let's move towards the important session of the inaugural ceremony and listen to the most awaiting address by today's chief guest speaker honorable dr arvind k ranu founder professor aisha pune meritus scientist ncl pune over to you dr sir so uh, i just share my sharing where it is now oh i don't know where i had been uh, can somebody help me uh ah where i go now from here sir we can see your screen you can just uh, go over your presentation uh oh, should i open my can you see my screen yes, yes sir we can okay i open my presentation yes sir it is visible it is okay yeah yeah just now can you see that yes sir okay. Uh, just make it as a possibility. Yes. Can you see that now? Yes, yes sir. We can see. Okay. Uh, Professor Kanare, how much time do I have? Forty, forty minutes. Forty minutes. Oh yes, forty minutes is more than enough for me. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, the youngsters. dignitary is on the dais and uh, attending this conference via the zoom meeting or on the digital platforms i am very happy to share with uh, some of my thought that came to my mind when uh, professor kanade invited me to give a uh, keynote address uh, my relationship of uh, Raj Shikshan Sansta goes back to ten years back, perhaps when first time I attended a conference me a, a meeting in Satara with Mr. Anil Patil and so on, all the authorities. And I think we came at that time for the inauguration of some science lab. I don't remember. Anyhow, my relationship and I really, really respect Karma Vir Bhavra Patil for his dedication. Without which, we would not have stood today in the platform where we are standing. So, with this preliminary this thing, I have made two uh, this one. Uh, one is a slight presentation, and then I'll talk a little bit about the what I feel about the. conference or what should be the student do uh, when i was told that most of the audience or the most of the audience are students and i thought it is better that i start from a level from where they can understand better and uh, this is how i'll start perhaps for the expert in the area may i may be excused uh, for doing so this is the icer building where we started in 10000 Uh, square feet in 2006 and uh, why i showed you is at the end i'll show you where we are now in a 4 400000 square feet so just to remind you you must remember karmavir bhavra patil also said once that you must remember from where you started so this is just to remind you on that basis i would like to know. exploring nano science i don't want to go into details by saying that nano science how big and how small perhaps the day to day life as uh, nano particles are not entered directly into the market although there it is on the verge but mainly in the, all the four science and this is one science which which is a true interdisciplinary science which deals with biology chemistry mathematics and all other things that is required so i consider this to be 
real interdisciplinary interdisciplinary talk. See, sometimes, sometime back, uh, this was Arnold Schwarzenegger. He, <clears throat> uh, in one of his movies, he says, the Terminator 3, the arsenal includes nanotechnological transactors. It can control other machines. When he said that, it was just a cinema and nobody thought, but here you can now see a complete nanocar made from a single molecule, which is a polymer. So you can see sometimes the prediction works much better than anything else. Okay. Ah. Then the, for the common or the student, how do the stain resistant material works, which uh, comes in the market? How do electronics keep getting smaller? How is it possible to, for a cancer patient not to have side effects? And the answer is, when you start thinking, the answer is really a nanotechnology will be able to answer all the questions that you have. One simple example, can you say, imagine a soldier that has a uniform that can change from desert to winter to forest camouflage by using current of battery to the rearrange alignment of molecules. The molecules are the same. By using the current battery, you okay. change as the current uh, battery operated. And then something that will suit you in desert will get converted automatically that suits you in the winter. That is the trick of uh -huh. nanotechnology or that is the nanotechnology. Is it very uh, new? Real to be frank? Is not that you uh, knew during the Roman times and stented window glasses, there were antiques engraved uh, in Czechoslovakia. Only those, the word nanotechnology or nanoscience was not. Even the Michael Faraday, very famous uh, scientist, he is gold, he reduced the gold in exceedingly fine particles to become diffuse, produce a beautiful fluid. And he said metal, metallic divided state. He never knew the word uh, nanoscience. Then who gave this word nanoscience? It was the great scientist Fenman, who always said there is a plenty of room at the bottom. Generally, it is convention to say there is a plenty of room at the top. But here he says, there is a plenty of room at the bottom. And he said, why we cannot write the entire 24 volumes of Encyclopedia <clears throat> Britannica on the head of a pin. If you just consider head of a pin is about one by 16 of an inch. And area of the head of a pin is area of all the pages of uh, Euro, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. Really, this was a uh, picture, but really came out true. However, the word nanotechnology was coined by Norio Taniguchi from Tokyo University. And he said, what we only need is better microscopes, the marvelous biological system, miniaturization of the computer, and rearranging of the atoms. So with these four aims, the real nanotechnology started long back. Now I don't want to go into details, only I wanted to say when the, uh, when the pro property that changes the nanometer scale are thermal, mechanical, electrical, and optical. Here I would like to add nanotechnology or nano, I would like to you, you still use the word nanoscience. Nanoscience <clears throat> Uh, it changed the definitions in chemistry after a very, very, very long time. You know, we have been studying that the, the atom is broken into pieces, that the smallest piece of a material the same, is still atom and has the same properties, which it changed, the property changed with the size, reducing it to nanoscale. It may be a thermal, mechanical, electrical, current, or whatever it is. Highest strength to weight ratio helps in creating lightweight spacecraft. Easily penetrates membrane. These are the three important properties of nanomaterials. Easily penetrate membranes such as cell walls, 
helps in cancer treatment. Electrical resistance changes significantly when other molecules attach themselves to the carbon data. Helps in developing sensor that can detect the chemical vapors or anything. Recently, there was a, this thing for arsenic detection sense made the drinking water much cheaper in this country. Why are they so important? They exhibit characteristic physical and biological properties. Properties can be tailored by varying their size and shape. This is the most important. There are three important parts. This is for the youngsters. Preparation of uh, nanomaterials, characterization, and applications. These two, if you consider individually, they are very simple. There are many knowns also. As he said, we are probably entering into the second area uh, or the second series or second stage. But the real challenge lies for one thing, according to me, still is can we design the uh, nanoparticles with the desired properties? To some extent, yes, by taking few clues. But according to me, there is still a gray area where designing of nanoparticles for a particular application is a very difficult process. And that is the thing that is now coming up into the uh, question and probably this the notable scientists uh, will be able to throw some light on this if there's something uh, which is very interesting. One thing is bulk so, uh, AU metal, gold metal, which is a conductor, when it goes to the nanoparticles, it goes to the, again, it goes to the insulator. So all the properties are changed. It also works as effective catalyst, mainly because I have today simplified my talk, uh, mainly to design the, it for the students and feel them comfortable that with which it will be attractive for them to work in this area. See, 10 nanometers particle, 15% of the atoms are on the surface. If it is one nanometer, 100% atoms are on the surface. So you can imagine, how effective catalyst can be developed using the nanoscience? So these are the two things, change of properties, designing of properties, a tailor-made um, catalyst for the uh, reactions and so on and so forth. There are two approaches, which is very easy in nanotechnology. One is the bottom-up approach. That means you gather the... <clears throat> different materials and devices constructed from uh, molecular components of their own. The best example of this bong approach in nanotechnology or the uh, bottom-up approach is Watson Creek base pairing or nanolithography. This is very easy. Another approach is top-down. That means you take material and try to break that into small uh, pieces without balancing its atomic reactions. Usually, top-down approach is practical, less as compared to the bottom-up approach. But many people follow various uh, um, uh, this thing. Generally, materials used, I have given here, why they are used, gold, ion, cheap fabrications, and all the things. This, you can get it in. Key terms you should know is buckyball fullerene, carbon nanotubes, MES, quantum dots, molecular self-repair assembly and lithography. You don't, if you don't understand this at this stage, you don't worry about it. But just think, these are the sum of the arrangements that are possible. Buckyball ministry, uh, Buckyball, you know, C60, then there are carbon tubes, carbon rods, and so on and so forth. So these are the keywords that needs to be understood. Now, so making is not very difficult. You can break it by any approach and get it nano self-assembly or anything. Now, uh, coming to the characterization, it's not very easy. Seeing is believing. You can use all the time scanning probe, my atomic force, scanning uh, tunneling microscope, ACM and TM. So characterization has been 
simplified to some extent. Can you see only molecules or not? Only molecules can even reactions can be easily like visualized today. For example, this anthracene gets converted into mono radical, gets into di radical and gets fused, gets rearranged to a diene. This you can actually see using several new techniques that are coming up and you'll be very happy. Till that time, we were just thinking, what is this atom? How we can see? Uh, we are just writing, teachers are telling that they say there is a negative charge. I used to feel that there is an actual one negative sign is there or something. But later on, it, we came to know it is a cloud electron where the highest electron density are there and all that. But now, seeing as we live in, you can visualize it very frequently, uh, very easily using the various techniques. Having said that, that the synthesis characterization and properties, which are very, very important. And these properties <clears throat> that we'll talk about because the mostly the, according to me, the abstracts and all other things that I, when I went through, I realized that the properties are the most important and most of the uh, speakers will talk about it or uh, even students have taken some initiative. It has applications mainly in the three or four areas. One is, the, of course, material science. Uh, we'll deal with this in little bit uh, details later on. Material science in terms of powders, coatings, carbon nanomaterials, energy, solar power, photovoltaic agency and fuel cells, medicine, genomics, proteomics, lab on chip, nanotubes, and most important, which I'm missing here, is the cancer treatment with the time, uh, targeted system, targeted uh, drugs are used. Then it is used in electronics, Q dots, Q bytes, bits, and all other things. When you come to quantum computing, then the convert, uh, um, present a digital uh, computing, uh, this electronics will be very much used. Devices, you can now use lithography, AFM, MEMS, and so on and so forth. Thus, this is the best science that has spread its wing across the uh, disciplines. Earlier, we used to have interdisciplinary subject where only two used to come together or three. But this will really encompass everything under the sky that is possible. I just, you don't worry about it. It really goes from day to day in polymer, cosmetics, LED, photovoltaic. We'll see some of them. Fuel cell, household laundry. You can see now you get nanoparticle uh, detergents with nanoparticles, paint industry, coating industry. It has really spread over everything. This, I don't want to go here except that I have given you two new areas which you can see. One is the clothes that I had told you, which are antibacterial, anti-allergic, um, and all other algae and protected from this. Now people are using in uh, pandemic situation. New tennis rackets are, are made now from carbon tubes and carbon rods to make it more lighter but with the same strength or the same <clears throat> heat, heating capacities, then there are antimicrobial use and so on and so forth. So there are several things that are coming up. I don't want to go into this details, but one thing, these are the applications and medicines, drug delivery, biosensor, magnetically assisted. One very important, according to me, is bio-separation, purification of bioactive substance, immobilization. If you have to more than several proteins, then you can design a nanoparticle, which is very difficult. Separation of a protein is a very, very difficult process, especially when they have the comparative uh, similar molecular weight. Whereas, But now you get the nanoparticle adsorbents where the things are coming up, which can separate the two proteins based just on the nanoparticle. Then another thing is drug loading and all the things. We'll see some of them here. I listed some of the biomedicines. 
is cosmetics that can penetrate the skin ability to wear cells in vivo fast drug creation that means now using the nanoparticles of nanotechnology and avm now you can actually see how the bacteria how the surface of the bacteria and you can visualize what kind of materials that should be used for plaque build up technology that can reglow bones and organs nano sensor for disease detection now the disease detection 10x faster and more accurate especially the genetic diseases where the it is where it is a single copy gene this is a very deserving nano filters with the help to create the impurity free drugs that have been used so these are the sum of the cures used in cures for aids cancer alzheimers and diabetes believe me nano particles are not drugs but they they are used to target a particular uh, uh, drug in such a way that it goes only to that cell let's take one example of this here is a gold particle here is a five fluorouracil which is antibacterial and anti leukemic drug that is take uh, that is loaded with the gold particle is loaded on this when it goes to the anti leukemic when it goes to cancer cell blood uh, cancer it directly goes and hits here and uh, material is used to cure there is a cell death similarly it is also used in antibacterial where it enters into the cytoplasm directly by because of the nano particle and it gets killed so there are now several applications of this nano particle are coming up in drugs i am touching more on drugs because it is a very very uh, challenging field nowadays you can use this for specific marker for biodistribution studies if you want to study in a eukaryotic cell how the material is getting distributed then there is a no better way than the uh, than the gold nanoparticles you treat this with carrier peptides you get the uh, uh, <coughs> uh, fluorophores with uh, gold nanoparticles goes into cells and you can see actually they wear the nanoparticle and targeting cell and tissues for bioimaging now you can put the whole rat under the micro cryo microscope and observe what are is required now you have a fluorescent biological cell those who work in biology this they will realize that if you use dye which is generally used for to cytology and all other things whether the molecule has entered into the cell or not now there are five and nanometer crystals bound to actin fibers and they are bound to the nucleus also it reduce the photo uh, reduce the photo bleaching multicolor labeling and so on and so far molecular size nano crystals are bio compatible with many other possible applications see when you use the dyes they are okay but they are not really that bio compatible but now you can produce a nano crystals which can be used there are possibilities that the oxygen selective pumps are being uh, designed using nano particles a mechanically artificial red blood cells can respirocytes or blood bone spherical 1 micron dynamometer atmospheric pressure active pumping powered by endogenous serum glucose and able to deliver 236 times more oxygen to the tissues per unit volume than the natural red cells and no manage of carbonic acid this is really revolutionary of course is yet to come to the regular um, this one so you can get the artificial red blood cells we can absorb deliver more than 200 times the oxygen uh, than the normal cell let us see how far it comes then you can use it for fixing the damaged cell using fluorophores as we suggested a generally convention is to use the dyes as i said for detection so since cytoplasm you have dye 
there you have nuclear NPs and now you can see here NPs are more or more photostable than we, um, than the uh, our fluorescence protector. What happens? You use the fluorescence uh, cytoplasm dye, but when you uh, irradiate that uh, to study the through the light, this may not be that stable and may lead to it. Whereas exactly the nanoparticles inside the nucleus is in closed environment are much photostable. Now, as I said, you can organic one material that is CD, SC, and, and uh, uh, selenides. You can give, they can give six different colors with different properties. So same material can be used as biosensor for several tested successfully in mouse. Now you can put this uh, whole mouse under the microscope and do. This is, according to me, the best contribution of nanoparticles to the medical science. Provides new options for drug delivery. If you take a cancer, first thing that comes to my your mind is complete side effects. It loses hair. Why it loses? Because it attacks the normal cells also. It is very difficult to prevent the attack of uh, only on the uh, cancer cells and not on the normal cells. And in order to provide that, in order to avoid side effects, nanoparticles are the best. They enable the drugs to be delivered to precise the right location in the body and release drug doses in a predetermined schedule. For example, a drug has to be given thrice in a day. The pro totally it is a program in with the aid of nanoparticles and it releases the one third drug at eight hours age. Attach a drug to a nano catcher, they become localized at the disease site. Then they release medicine that kills the tumor, and nanobots can clear the blockage in arteries. Now there is a new technique. Instead of stent, can we use the nanobots to uh, uh, clear the blockage in the artery. Still in the process, there are many drug targeted delivery, uh, targeted delivery drugs are now in the market, especially for leukemia and so on and so forth. There are many other roles. As I said, this is truly interdisciplinary. We talked of biology. We talked of erosion resistance. Last or longer, now Indian railways have started using NIO uh, the materials that are based on uh, nanoparticles which are erosion resistance. And then <clears throat> na silver nanocrystals are used in bandages, synthetic bones and aerogels and all other things that is practically used. The synthetic bones are yet to come, you know. <laughs> Jokingly, they say nanoparticles will make the blood, make the bones, and what the human being did. We'll see that. Materials, fiber that is stronger than spider web, metals 100% stronger than steel, catalysts that respond more quickly, plastic that conduct electricity. Can you imagine? Coating that need nearly frictionless, materials that change color and transparency on demand. And nano powders are five times as light as plastic, but provide the same radiation protection as the metals. I'm giving you one simple example. Two GB in 1980 used to cost $80,000. Today's two GB in 2010 is $5. And now I think one terabyte costs the same numbers. So, this was possible because of the miniaturization in computer based mainly on the uh, nanotechnology. Energy, fuel cell technology become cost effective in three years. Batteries that store more energy and are much efficient. Plastic and paints that will store solar power and convert uh, into electricity at the rate of $1 per watt. So these are the things that are coming up in energy also. The, however, the real thing is coming into the computers when it comes to be miniaturized. When I used my computer, first computer, somewhere in 1988 in Russia, 
it used to occupy about 10, believe me, it used to occupy by 10 feet by six feet. And silicon is hitting its size limit. Moore's law says that it gets doubled and all other things. Number of trans in integrated surface doubles every two years. Super chips, plastic semiconductor manufactured by regular printing devices, cheaply produced electronic papers, and whatnot. It is really replaced silicon transistor in your computer, may be replaced by transistor based on carbon nanotubes. Nanorods is upcoming technology in a display techniques where you can see actually they say you can actually bundle your computer screen and go away anywhere. You can pass your finger through the nano computer that is in the air. Size of nano microprocessors. Researchers at the non, uh, North Carolina University called nanodots that growing arrays of magnetic nanoparticles. So all these things, why I'm telling you, is just to show you, now there are DNA-based computers are coming up because of the less use of electricity. Then this is a nano wire. I don't want to get into intricacies of these things. Chips produced by Intel before I series process were between 65 nanometers to 45. Later, with the help of nanotechnology, now you had 25 nanometer chips were made, which itself is a milestone. Faster and smaller, high speed, high capacity, allows circuits to be more accurate on the atomic level. With this, we'll be able to store our data in a much, much smaller component. Now, the param computers for us, high supercomputers are, that are stored or used are in very, many, many, very miniature space because of the nanoparticles. In energy, in solar PV cells, Solar are photovoltaic devices. It converts light to electrical energy. And majority of the solars are fabricated by semiconductors by silicon or G. Less efficient and high manufacturing cost. And extra energy is wasted in the form of it. When you use with a nanotechnology, nanostructure thin films are used in solar cells uh, of 150 nanometer thin films, nano boost, cell performance, solar set coated with the film of silicon of one nanometer are more efficient. The real problem with the solar energy right now is maximum. There is a maximum conversion of 32 or 33 percent and rest is unutilized. So perhaps by using these nanofilms, things can be improved. There are, however, everything is not green on the other side of the hedge there is a two or three obstacles and hurdles. One is the question of mass production, throughput and cost constraint. Let it be cheaper, then only things will come. Explosion uh, or the exploitation into the technology, if it has to be there, then it has to be mass production and throughput and cost constraint. Funding requires long-term investment. This is not a quick business that you provide $1 million today and get a nano chip or nanos. This is really, really uh, requires. Intellectual property issue, patent office that is overwhelmed and underqualified. This is one thing. See, IPR is one of the things where there are no enough good scientists to judge these IPR patents. So this is one of the chance for the Indians to come into the fray. So this is a mass production, funding requirement, and the intellectual property issues. These are the three main hurdles right now. And people will come out from the technical side, but from the conversion of science to the technology has some hurdles. What are the pitfalls? Nanoparticles can get into the body through the skin into digestive steam that's creating free radicals. This is one of the worries with the and cancer cells or anything. That goes inside the cell and they create the free radicals. And you know, free radicals in the body, they create havoc, havoc and <clears throat> uh, therefore it is now considered to be one of the pitfalls. So they would like to design that. 
nanoparticles are in the blood stream they will cross the blood barrier the most danger so this is a danger in the health of course this is the danger with most of the new technologies whether this is a dna technology rna technology or anything but it crosses the blood barrier is the most one of the danger the most dangerous thing in nano application is used in the nano bomb that contain the engineer self multiplying viruses that can continue to wipe off a community country or a civilization when this pandemic came this was what was suspected that they this can be a nano bomb or this thing i don't know who go into the those litigation litigations of whether it is a man created or whatever it is but that is theoretically possible it has been practiced twice in the war in the history and one has to be very careful remember science is always a two folded uh, two uh, sided sword is it up to you to use it which uh, size uh, which side you would like to use and you must use this for the betterment of this society because the aim of the science is uh, society is for society nanobots because of their replicating behavior can be big threat for a gray goo that is the calamity or hypothesization of the one of the calamities that can have so these are the some of the pitfalls that everything is not perfect science we may go by the glamour the science has but there are many 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 disadvantages also as said it is a growing science science is a uh, it's continuously progressing there is no stop in the science there may be milestones but there are no permanent stones in science and that is true shown by the way so what the possibilities in the future can be may take it possible to make stronger and programmable materials that require less energy to produce the conventional materials promises greater fuel efficiency in land transport nano robotic future of nanotechnology will be bed included in nano robotics and these nano robots have the potential to take on human task and enter into the world there are many fictions i read i saw one film where this uh, small particles are sent inside the blood stream and how they feel and when they travel through nerves tissues how they feel that might be coming to be true and there was another movie called honey i shrunk the kids where the kids are made of nano size perhaps and sent so these are no more fictions they may come into science for betterment of science and so on and so forth so these are some of the possibilities of the future scope in the future is same we are talked of nano robots there can be entirely nano surgical field to help cure mm-hmm. everything from natural aging to diabetes to bones first now here the ethical question arises should we can it be replaced with a blood can it replace the bone can it uh, stop from the natural aging so, so it might happen that tomorrow we all are of 105 years age somebody was joking then you have to take seventh or eighth dose or tenth dose of um, corona against covid but these are the some of the ethical problems that are associated can we again you can we work against in science this is a general question you must think that although there is a wide wide scope to manufacture materials and drugs and uh, drug targeted drug deliveries and nanotechnology however there is one question that always comes to my mind and that is whether we are going in the right direction as i said if you use it for betterment it's okay but believe me believe me the same scientists can handle the nano bomb to spread the viruses it has been done in the biological warfare once or twice earlier so there is no problem about it the real problem here is to fold one why nanotechnology will survive according to me is on twice this is for the youngsters one it has changed something drastically and fundamentally for example it has changed the definitions 
of the in chemistry. There's hardly any science in chemistry where the textbook definitions have been changed. So what I know is perhaps the in a definition of enzymes, but uh, this is one. Secondly, this is true in interdisciplinary. We had realized that we are marching from single discipline to multidisciplinary sciences. And now this is a true example of interdisciplinary science. And one need to take a lesson, especially for the youngsters, those who are studying in, in the colleges, that uh, you should, the physics fellows should not close down their eyes on biology, nor the mathematics and so on and so forth. So the importance of interdisciplinary education and training is a must. And nano, nano sciences uh, put, put up the best in the country to deal with. In fact, I would like to go back its roots to our 10th and 12th standard science where the students are taught to hate either mathematics or biology to score the subjects and so on and so forth. So I think we are on a very, very dangerous step at, the, at that level. And I really appeal to the students and the faculty members not to do it, although it's on the Indian scenario for a very, very long time. Another reason why the nanotechnology will flourish because it's getting converted into nanotechnology applications in day-to-day -day science, and so on and so forth. There are many good sciences, but they are not uh, eternal. That is mainly because their applications are not that. And within a few years, when we are entered into step three or age three of nanotechnology, we'll have much, much user in the daily practices when you wear a shirt in the winter and shirt in the summer, which will give you may the same comfort that you are using. So with this, really, I am very happy to participate in this. And I, I, I would like to thank the management, especially Dr. Kanri, for giving me this opportunity. When I went through the abstracts, when I saw the futuristic property, I saw that you have masters of the subject, yeah. Professor Marunga, Professor Singh, Dr. Kali, and so on and so forth. What I talked about the interdisciplinary, I'm still stressing it, is well reflected in the abstracts where people are talking about the synthesis of two-dimensional structures, synthesis of photocatalytic properties with the nanomaterials. There is a, a full lecture on how these nanoparticles can be made using biological resources such as actinomycetes. Then there is an excellent lecture on pseudo use of this is a burning topic nowadays use of zero viruses for further therapeutic role, uh, therapeutic role of non-monoclonal antibodies. This is a very hot topic. And if this is successful, probably we'll be able to end up the existing pandemic. Then we have several lectures on the science. Techno technique also electron beam nanolithography. And as said in the abstract, there's a nano in pharma, nano in bio, non-adsorbent for removal of dyes, non-adsorption of a nanoparticle of arsenic to get a purified drinking water at the cost of five paisa per glass. So this is the strength of the science. And we please realize this. This is the... Thank you very much, sir, to the United States Young Scientists and everybody, those who are present, and the whole audience, which are valuable, Informative address on nanotechnology or we can say nanoscience. We are very grateful to have you with us, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, moving forward in the program, we have with us uh, President of this inaugural ceremony, Honorable Principal Dr. V. S. Shivanta, sir. Secretary, Higher Education, Relaxation of the I request Principal Dr. Shivanta, sir, to take over the charge and address. The audience with your presidential speech. Uh, Dr. Sir, I request you to please uh, stop screen share. I've done it. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. I request Good morning. You Good morning to dignitaries of this uh, inaugural function. 
चीफ गेस्ट डॉक्टर अरविंद नाथू साहेब प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द कॉलेज डॉक्टर कानडे सर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर निकुंभ कॉर्डिनेटर ऑल टीचिंग नॉन टीचिंग स्टाफ सी डी सी मेम्बर्स एंड डेयर पार्टिसिपेंट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक प्रिंसिपल ऑफ दिस कॉलेज हु ऑर्गेनाइज सच ए इम्पॉर्टेंट थ्री डे हाइब्रिड इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस इन रेत शिक्षण संस्था अन्ना साहेब आउटे कॉलेज मंचर आई टेक दिस ऑपॉर्चुनिटी टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक डॉक्टर नातू फॉर इज इन्फॉर्मेटिव लेक्चर and introducing us uh, in the amazing world of nanotechnology and at the end the importance of uh, interdisciplinary education in our life uh dear participants nanotechnology is a creation of uh, functional materials devices and systems through control of matter at the scale of 1 to 100 nanometers actually the nano in nanotechnology is short form of nanometer which is 1 billionth of a meter classical fields of physics chemistry material science and uh, uh, ferrous uh, trades of the engineering that is electrical mechanical chemical these are all involved in new field of nanotechnology as uh, honorable nathu rightly said research and development in that area is truly interdisciplinary in the nature and besides engineering there are many disciplines like food medicine space environment in which nanotechnology is involved the use of nanotechnology makes the applications of these disciplines very cost effective novel and will continue to have positive social impact and technology is being used in various applications to improve the environment by cleaning up existing uh, pollution improving methods to reduce uh, generation of pollution the most advanced nanotechnology nanotechnological applications related to environment are to reduce air pollution water pollution and to improve fuel and solar cells dear friends nanot materials such as carbon uh, nanotubes and nanoparticles are contributing to the development of more efficient and cost efficient cost effective water filtration processes nanotechnology could play an important role in water remediation also improving the efficiency of fuel cells as it is rightly explained by dr nathu through the use of nanotechnology appears to be more plausible by using molecularly tailored catalyst polymer membranes nanotechnology has reached the electronics industry with features in microprocessors now less than 100 nanometers in size smaller size allow faster processing times nano electronics increase the capability of all these devices nanotechnology also can offer improved versatility through faster data transfer more mobile processing power and larger data storage another most important thing about nanotechnology is it has been applied extensively in drug delivery to improve the therapeutic outcomes of various diseases the ultimate goal of the clinical use of drug delivery system is to enhance drug efficacy while reducing unwanted normal tissue side effects to achieve this goal three rs are essential all of us know that right site at the right time and the right levels three rs uh, and are applicable to injectable nano medicine for cancer therapy nano medicinal applications and these areas include drug delivery as i had explained earlier diagnostics antimicrobial techniques 
repairing of a specific disease cells, healing and repairing of skin tissues, etc. Nanotechnology representing a new frontier in modern agriculture. It is anticipated to become a major thrust in near future by offering potential applications. The integrating approach that is agro nanotechnology has great potential to cope with the global challenges of food production, food security, sustainability, and climate change. Uh, finally, nanotechnology is also being involved in making spaceflight practical. Nanotechnology has also developed tennis balls, rackets, golf balls, etc. So nanotechnology has the potential to improve the lives, making them faster, economical, and better. Uh, I'm sure it will develop constructive mind towards the research areas of uh, chemical, physical, life sciences, engineering, and other branches. I hope this conference will provide an excellent opportunity to all the participants to interact with scientists, researchers, experts, and students to exchange their ideas. I wish this international conference a very grand success. Thank you very much. Now I request Dr. R. S. Nimbarkar, sir, co convener of the conference, to propose a common vote of thanks for the inaugural ceremony. Hello. It is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks of inaugural ceremony of international conference, Integrative Nanotechnology Perspectives of Multidisciplinary Applications 2022 at Anasaf Aute College, Mansar, District Pune. To the chief guest, Dr. Arvind Natusha, founder, Professor Aisar Pune, and emeritus scientist, NCL Pune, has, po has pointed <coughs> significant factors on nanotechnology and higher education and research for improvement and honor this function. On behalf of our college, I express my most sincere thanks to Dr. Natu sir for accept, accepting the invitation and honor this ceremony. Thank you, sir. The president of today's inaugural ceremony, Principal Dr. V.S. Shivan Karsa, Secretary Rayat Chikshan Samstha Satara has honored this function by its inspiration, thoughts, guidance and support to organize this function conference. On behalf of Anasai Bhavate College Mansar, I would like to express thanks to him. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank our principal, Dr. K.G. Kanale, sir. Also, I would like to thank Vice Principal, Dr. Nikum, sir, Kale, sir, Bolbot, sir, I would like to say thanks to all participants for their attendance on online platform to make this <coughs> inaugural ceremony a grand success. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> And for the first session, I would like to invite the chairperson of the session, Dr. E.B. Kari, Executive Director, Center for Materials for Electronics Technology, CIMET, Government of India, Pune, to chair the session. Over to you, sir. Kari, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thanks. Um, Thanks to uh, organizing committee for giving opportunities to me for at least a very introducing and uh, two very well-known speakers in today's uh, conference. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Professor Kanade because uh, uh, the uh, for organizing this very good conference. And uh, I would like I would like to talk to I would like 
to thank our uh, um, our executive director earlier in the director dr dp amanerkar for uh, for his uh, help in this uh, uh, arranging this conference uh, both uh, kanari sir was there in uh, korea and he knows all korean uh, culture and he did lot a uh, lot many things there in korea because uh, when uh, when he was there he published many papers in korea itself and he learned many things from the korea and uh, one of our uh, i'm very happy that one of our friend uh, 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 the professor kim and uh, uh, professor moriga they are going to uh, give the lecture in this conference in this session and i am very happy that i am the uh, chair of this session that got for these two very renowned uh, 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 speakers uh, professor kim uh, is a very busy person and uh, all the time uh, you know if you go to that uh, university he always uh, busy it is very get, difficult to get his time and today uh, he is going to talk on two dimensional materials and their heterostructure using plasma and cbd Uh, technique. Uh, so before uh, uh, before he stop, I would like to uh, introduce him because uh, uh, he came. Uh, he is like actually our well wisher uh, of uh, India as well as our all organizations because he um, he likes to come to India. He likes to to uh, um, to visit uh, many, uh, to India many times because earlier he has visited to. Uh, Uh, india especially in cement also and uh, his work on nanotechnology is really uh, uh, really uh, wonderful and uh, people are uh, the uh, there are many indian students uh, working uh, uh, under his uh, guidance professor kim uh, received his bachelor in mechanical engineering from uh, seoul national university uh, korea in 1994 he received his uh, masters and and phd in mechanical engineering from university of uh, minnesota university in 1998 and phd in 2002 uh, respectively he joined uh, uh, siget technology in 2002 and worked as a senior engineer in uh, recording uh, head and rm since 2005 dr kim has been a professor in the school of mechanical engineering and skq advanced of nanotechnology and uh, he uh, he has appointed as skq young fellow and uh, and started working for skq research and business foundation as the vice president during 2019 and 2020 he worked as a vice president of um, uh, admission his research interests include 2d material synthesis optical fiber sensor semiconductor display management process uh, cmp cleaning and contamination control and atmos atmospheric indoor aerosol control and his uh, uh, he has 188 publications in uh, international journals he has a 55 korean patents five us patents and three japanese patents successfully completed 46 government and 25 uh, industrial projects so he has a academic as well as very industrial experience society participation editorial uh, he is editor board member of sensors then member of uh, ieee president of korea cmpgm vice president korea society of mechanical engineering kapur sare committee member korea air cleaning association and associate editor igcr so as uh, so you can see that this uh, very wonderful uh, uh, by data of professor kim now uh, professor kim uh, i welcome you and uh, i uh, i just invite you for the delivering this today's lecture thank you very much professor kim okay. um, can you can you hear me Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you for uh, a nice introduction, uh, Dr. Kyle. And and also, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Kanade for inviting me to give a keynote address uh, for this uh, important uh, conference. Uh, 
Um, un unfortunately, uh, yesterday I, I had a small accident and I injured my uh, check and chain. So I'm not in a condition to give a full one hour presentation. So uh, today I'm going to ask my uh, uh, PhD student, uh, Vinit Kanade, uh, to give a presentation for me uh, instead of me. Uh, sorry about this. And I hope uh, uh, you will uh, enjoy a wonderful conference. And I'm, I'm also hoping that maybe next time I can uh, visit India again and, and meet all of you in person and, and give a, a presentation in, you know, in, in person. Thank you, sir. You have to promise to come next time if I have to do. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And take care. Okay, uh, Vinit, can you Thank start? Sir, your presentation is visited universally. Yes, Professor, okay. You can start. Professor Kim, you can start. Hello? Sir, meaning, sir, you will proceed. You will start your uh, session. Okay. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. We, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, again, uh, Yeah, uh, just one minute. Mm -hmm. So you have 40 minutes for your session. You have 30 minutes for your session. Yeah, sure. Uh, no problem. So uh, good morning. Every, good morning, everyone. Uh, as explained by earlier, my uh, PhD advisor, Professor Tesan Kim. So he will be not presenting today his keynote seminar. So I will be presented here. So thank you for uh, giving me the, this opportunity and I am going to start my seminar. So my, uh, so my seminar topic is uh, synthesis of uh, two dimensional material for uh, you, and their heterostructure using plasma enhanced CVD. So first of all, uh, I will introduce about my university. So uh, SKKU, which is the abbreviation for Sun Kyun Kwan University. So our, uh, the, our university have very uh, old history since like 1398 it has been it founded but uh, it it is been again refo refounded or reformed in 1895 and 1946 and it is now continue continuously been um, in the educational uh, educational history in the korea so Sun Kyun Kwan University have two campus. One is in Seoul and one is in Suwon. Basically, Seoul is for uh, we call it as human human and social science campus, where usually the arts and economics uh, 
the subjects which are usually in cover and so one campus where uh, currently i am located at it is related with mainly uh, science stream and engineering streams so skq have like very good ranking in its in domestic as well as in international uh, they are in number 1 in private university in korea as well as in international they have 88 rank in uh, qs world ranking university so mainly uh, there are like almost 18000 students and 7000 uh, graduate students out of which there are like literally half of those are uh, international students and as well as we uh, our university has partnered with samsung corporation for the many in the many research area so as as you can see there there are like various uh, there are various funding almost like 400 million which is out of which like 305 million from the government and almost 80 million up from the industry and we also rank in very uh, good performance in the scientific publication almost like uh, 5000 pu- publication at least per year oh sorry not per year and we and there are like we advance in majorly like this uh, area basically the engineering in information and communication medicine bioscience technology and, and nano nanotechnology so oh. basically i i came from this nanotechnology institute which is also called as sunkin con advanced institute of nanotechnology or it is abbreviated as sint so little bit bio about my professor as already dr uh, kale has been explained earlier my professor is uh, has completed his um, bachelor and masters and phd from mechanical in engineering and after that he 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 get acquainted with various uh, various designation as well as uh, some of the a uh, very good opportunity such as president of uh, vice president of uh, in the admission in the in our only university so let us say like what our lab is doing in this area so our lab is uh, called as nptl which is abbreviation of nanoparticle technology lab currently we have one research professor and we are almost like 28 students right now and we are researching in main, uh, in many a area mainly the semiconductor process which mainly the chemical mechanical polishing which is like many people are uh, working in this area along with other department but now we are uh, in the next few slides we are dealing with 2d material using plasma cvd work and now um, let us see about that our uh, now coming back to our original topic so these are the contents i am going to follow throughout my presentation and out of which first is 2d materials so what is exactly the 2d materials and what what is it its importance basically the 2d materials are derived from this kind of material we can we can classify material in 0d 1d 2d and 3d the d is stand is here for the dimension dimensional of material the well known example of this 0d we can call it as uh, quantum dots the 1d we can uh, known as carbon carbon nanotube or some nano wires nano nano fibers the 2d materials are 
the graphene is well known example of it it's just recently uh, got the nobel for the same discovery and there are some uh, 3d materials which are like systematic arrangement of these molecules so out of which we are focusing on uh, 2d materials throughout the fol following the present uh, following the presentation the 2d materials have like uh, they have like few atomic thicknesses and with due to high mobility and high conductivity and high mechanical state they are very uh, verily investigated through many in many researches so what are the prime like how many there are various types of 2d materials as i explained also earlier the 2d materials are the solid crystal consisting of single or few layers of atoms so you can see in this diagram like there are many examples such as graphene hexagonal boron nitride transition metal oxide as well as there are tmdc so mainly we are focusing on tmdc but let us see like uh, mainly the graphene here are these are like uh, allotropy of carbon which is like carbon atom are arranged in 2d honeycomb structures as shown in this figure this uh, material shows like zero band gap so as well as it it is uh, considered as strong material if we consider it as atomic thickness with considering with another material as well as hexagonal boron nitrate which is also a very good material for insulator and as well as it is used for like uh, stacking material in many devices it it shows insulating behavior because the band gap is almost around 6 electron volts and third one is uh, tmdc which is also abbreviation for transition metal dichalcogenates so how um, how this abbreviation is uh, came from basically if you take any any metal from this transition metal uh, as shown in this periodic table and there are chalcogen like like sulfur selenide or telluride if you combine with this formula like mx2 or as shown in this table there are like uh, many formation of metal or uh, many stable metal we can we can found out this tmdc material and these are we can get in few layers or like a single layer which have the one I means uh, the gap between these two material which is also called as vendor wall uh, gap and out of this we can try to combine or like a many permutation or combination of this material we can get this moh2 uh, or well uh, vanadium sulfide tantalium sulfide something like material but currently we are only focusing on these two material first it's moh2 and second is wh2 so why means or like what are the good proper uh, properties of this tmdc material first one is uh, its tunable band gap depending on number layer as uh, as shown in this diagram if we change the number of layer the band gap is also change it, it 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 is decreases or it shifted from direct to indirect then uh, we can go for like high scalability in the case of this transition metal dichalcogenide as well as for if we consider like fuel atomic layer these materials are relatively transparent and as well as we can uh, do it we can use it for flex flexible uh, electronics as well and this shows uh, various phases we will discuss the, about this phases on later on also uh, 
but these phases mainly the semiconducting and metallic phases are useful for certain kind of uh, applications so let's discuss about our second topic which is uh, synthesis of uh, tmdc so there are two approaches for the synthesis of tmdc as the name suggest there is top down method and another one is bottom up method so uh, in top down method there there is a classical example for uh, like graphene which we already been produced or like many materials have been produced using mechanical exfoliation which is like uh, we can put scotch tape on bulk material we can remove their scotch tape uh, means this scotch tape and if we do this uh, we many times we will get like few layers or single atomic layers of the material the for, uh, form of the bulk material and as well as there are uh, electrochemical exfoliation uh, we can use i mean we can apply the voltage uh, in the presence of lithium ion this lithium ion when intercalate and it uh, it went into the this bulk material and it deform into the nano sheets or few layers of material so uh, as you get an idea from this like this is like we get from bulk to uh, nano I means few layers hence this is called as top down method and another one is bottom up method which means like a uh, slowly growth of this material first one is primary primarily we call, we call it as chemical synthesis has been like uh, many people have been trying or like many research have been done for this like we can use uh, two chemicals and as well as we can use hydrothermal reaction or some kind of uh, another chemical reactions to get the layered material from this chemical synthesis and last one is uh, chemical vapor deposition which we will talk about further because we will use some uh, some part of this uh, chemical vapor deposition or cvd we call it here for the our material this is very uh, critical process where the temperature of the temperature of the material uh, means the process is significantly higher and here the two materials is also get reacted and deposited on the substrate there there have been like many papers or many uh, earlier research also have been done to use this method to produce a very high quality of transition metal dichalcogenate so these are the synthesis method have been like uh, mainly used for the tmdc also there are various also which is like modification of this or other or combination or one or two methods so what are the limitations of this process first one is about the mechanical exfoliation the first one is a uh, poor repro reproducibility because as i already told you the for exfoliating the certain kind of from bulk material we we cannot get always mono layer or bi layer or two layer always we have to find out there are like a uh, very less chance or like uh, controllability of this mechanical exfoliation is very less as well as the small scale fabrication you will get only the small area of uh, our tmdc material second one is uh, hydrothermal method or intercalation process so these processes are uh, certainly good but they are they having some like uh, they have we they have to go through like multi step processes as well as we 
we get some low yield because there are not all the materials are in the same size as well as the uh, shape of the synthesized material is uh, not good as shown is here that thickness uniformity is not there and the cvd process the main thing about this process is uh, the high temperature process and also the poor thickness uniformity as as shown here we need to get the substrate temperature very higher it it is almost more than 500 degrees celsius in some cases or in some cases almost up to 1000 degrees celsius and along with that the thickness uniformity is also not good we need to control many parameters to do the thickness control so further we we modify or like we use this modified cvd method which is also here we called as plasma enhanced cvd method or which is simple abbreviation it's uh, pcvd so here we uh, utilize the plasma to generate the necessary necessary chemical reaction to generate our tmdc in this case so what uh, what exactly happen in this case the uh, highly ionized ion will bombard onto another uh, ion which exchange the energy and that energy will transfer and produces some electron and positive um, in uh, the remaining uh, ions here are the few reactions as uh, explained in this case like argon argon will get argon plus and uh, electron and this argon will bombard into the uh, H2S gas in this case of uh, hydrogen sulfide and we get H2S plus ion and this H2S plus ion will get to the metal and bombard into the material and we will get our uh, M metal sulfide in this case. So as, as shown in this schematic here, the we mainly use two gases in this condition for the argon and H2S. We use argon because we need more ionization of the gases and we need H2S because this is primary gases which is combining with our metal as shown in this figure. These ions are uh, charged and recharged repeatedly and due to the electromagnetic field, this ion and bombard onto our material and the metal sulfide is get formed. While doing this, we can also take uh, help of heater or heating material, or we can heat the material to get the appropriate result, whatever we want. So basically what is happening or like how the plasma help us or how we can reduce the temperature so if you see the typical cold plasma or uh, if you check the any plasma cross section it have like its core temperature is almost higher up to like uh, 10000 kelvin and the outer shell is at room temperature due to this unique structure like we can we can synthesize many high temperature material at relatively cold uh, uh, cold cold condition using this material. So here on the right hand side, the, there is our schematics of our uh, plasma CVD. So as explained earlier, there is typical heater arrangement on that our substrate is placed. And in uh, then we put this chamber onto the vac uh, to onto the vacuum and then we introduce the gases mainly in this case of argon and H2S or there are like different combination of gases we can use uh, such as H2S, H2, CF4, N2O2 depending on the material we want and these uh, gases we can uh, from these gases, we can make plasma using this uh, RF coil, 
which is also called as radio frequency uh, coil from this matter we can generate the plasma and we can synthesize the our material so uh, what is the advantage of our pcd we can go for like very large scale synthesis in like the wafer scale synthesis also we can uh, make this control synthesis low temperature we can achieve the high uh, like highest or uh, chemical synthesis or high purity and as well as due to like uh, low vacuum or no typical solid reaction happen uh, do, there is like low contamination in this case. so we utilize this uh, pcvd condition for synthesizing the tungsten disulfide so firstly we will discuss like how we synthesize tungsten disulfide using this so as i explained earlier the plasma reaction takes place but before that we we deposited uh, the our target material in this case the for tungsten disulfide we need tungsten material on our substrate we deposited tungsten mat, uh, 1 nanometer thickness using uh, ebeam evaporator ebeam is like highly vacuumized chamber where we can control the thickness um, and we deposited material in this case and then we load this uh, metal deposited uh, substrate into our plasma cvd chamber where this uh, as explained earlier the plasma reaction has takes place and then uh, final after the sulfurization we got the tungsten disulfide we we critically put this or like we optim we optimize the temperature for this case it's almost 150 degree celsius for to synthesize uh, the our recorded the ws2 so so there are like may, many use for this process like we can utilize this process on various substrate such as as explain uh, as shown in this figure that we can use uh, this ws2 on like glassy carbon electrode which we utilize for our uh, electrochemical application as well as we can directly synthesize on teflon as well as on the poly, uh, polyimide which is like flexible substrate we can directly synthesize along with silica uh, silica oxide so here um, at shown in, shown in this figure uh, we synthesize uh, wafer scale ws2 as shown in this figure so here are the om image as we can see like there is uh, no contrast between like any other image as well as here are the uh, afm im image as well as the raman mapping image which confirms the uniformity of our material the raman raman spectra at this particular point we measure we found out the typical e and a peak of this ws2 material which uh, which is highly identifying that our material is successfully synthesized but along with that uh, there are some another peaks such as j1 j2 and j3 peak which are associated with uh, metallic or 1t phase of uh, ws2 so what is 1t phase or what are these uh, metallic phase so as i explain earlier also like we will uh, talk about the phases now discuss about the phases so if we think about the phase is like phase is a, in this case is typical arrangement of this uh, atom in this case uh, if we uh, check the what is difference between like uh, 1t 2h and 3r the 1t is called as metallic phase 2h and 3r mainly are, they are semiconducting phase uh, because of their trigonal prismatic uh, arrangement uh, sir sorry to interrupt you so yes uh, 
Uh, we have actually uh, done this in 30 minutes. Then, uh, time. You can wind up your uh, further work uh, within a few minutes. Hello. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, as, as shown in this figure, there are many phases like 1T and 2H. Basically, 1T one, one is metallic phase. So, what we get in this case is 1T phase. So, as compared with 1T and 2H phase, um, as 1T is relatively metastable phase and 2H is naturally stable. And also, 2H, uh, these phases are very temperature sensitive. If you consider what is the method or like synthesis of this 1T phase, uh, these are the transition means, uh, mean there are various ways such as intercalation or some kind of treatment we will get, which convert the 2H into 1T phase or like high temperature annealing. We will get this 1T method, but in our case, we found out like this material is uh, we can easily synthesize using our uh, plasma and CVD as shown here. And as well as our material is very useful uh, because uh, it shows some nanograins uh, as well as uh, highly oriented grain size as well as various layer structure in this case. The XPS also confirms the phases. Here in this case, the 1T is showing majority phase and as well as 2H. So what is typical application for 1T? So we utilize 1T for the hydrogen evolution reaction. The hydrogen evolution reaction is part of electrolysis. Uh, basically the cathodic part of electrolysis. Traditionally, many uh, transition metals have been used uh, for the HR uh, processes, but uh, they are not uh, stable in highly acidic medium. So basically uh, we utilize this material for like sulfur vacancy uh, because of the, it, the use of this material because of we, if we get some vacancy or phase transition or some exposed site, we will get good result in HR. So these are the, our HR results where we get like uh, comparative result with other, uh, uh, other references as well. And also like almost thousand cycles also, we will get like good cycle stability as we can see in, his, in this run. So further we use similar strategy also to develop the MOS2 material similar structure uh, for MOS2. Also, we will get the same 1T phase, but here we also utilize for 300 degrees Celsius where we get the uh, semiconducting phase as shown in this XPS diagram. So we can see the typical uh, arrangement of atoms. In this case, the 1T phase shows a typical uh, trigonal as uh, octahedral and this is trigonal prismatic structure for the 2H phase. Then we further did the uh, electrochemical analysis where we got the 1T is good performance because obviously it shows the metallic uh, phase and this material is also considered like a good performer with like among many catalysts as well as the uh, post hr or after hr we also get the good stability as material is not degrade in the highly acidic medium further we utilize uh, this material for heterostructure uh, arrangement here like uh, the what is the heterostructure basically if we align this material different material mo2 and wh2 we will get the typical arrangement like uh, in plane if they are in one plane and if they are in one on other they are a vertical arrangement what exactly the we properties we get 
we we get the basically the band alignment in the MOS 10 WS2 case, which which gives us unique property in this case. There are like uh, many processes as uh, I discussed earlier, but they are not uh, good in the case of because they are have like polymer residue due to the high temperature, the low yield, also like complex mechanical processes. So how we synthesize? Again, like we deposited first tungsten, then molybdenum, then we sulfurize and we get this histostructure as there are uh, Raman results to confirm our uh, synthesis. We can do this uh, in reverse order as well, like WMO uh, means the tungsten sulfide on top or tungsten sulfide on uh, down or like vice versa. Also, we can do this for different metal layers like MO1 nanometer or W1 nanometer up to two nanometer each, we can do this synthesize very easily. Then we further analysis for time dependent uh, HRTM as well as Raman spectra, how we get synthesis. So as, as shown in this TM diagram at zero minute, there are only the metal layer, but after 30 minutes, the layers are tried to form. Then again, the middle layers are tried to form and then the whatever material after this, the MOS2, WS2 vertical heterostructure, uh, the optimized material we get. The same the Raman analysis the sh shows uh, in this case. So these are the cross-sectional of, uh, cross of this HRTM, uh, what we see. The 150 shows relatively less number of layers compared with 300. Also, the interlayer distance between each layer is also almost like uh, similar in this both case. Also, the hardy image also confirms the purity of our synthesized material. The hello, hello, yeah, uh, I'm finishing now. The we use this material for the electrical and diode measurement, and uh, which we get the diode behavior what we want, and also we utilize for the photo response measurement. The we got the photo response for this MOS10 WS2 structure higher than MOS10 WS2. So in the summary, um, what we get is like we can synthesize large scale of 2D materials and 2D heterostructure at relatively low temperature, and this plasma CVD synthesis is we can do very high uniformity quality and reproducibility, which is useful. Also, low temperature process for the 2D material and heterostructure. Also, uh, we can synthesize on various substrate. Also, the uh, uh, this MOS2 vertical heterostructure work as PN junction as shown and shown the excellent photo response and photo detecting performance. So, thank you for listening. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Vinit. So. Uh, can we have uh, quickly questions, one or two questions, because we are um, you can be late. Any questions? The uh, platform is open for the question and answer session. So if you have any question, you may raise your hand from the participants online as well as offline. Hello. Y yes. I think even if there is no question. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, due to time, it is fine. <laughs> I will stop here. Hello, I have one question. Shall I ask yes. one question? Huh? Yes. Yes. yes, Professor, anytime. So, uh, what is different between heterostructure and uh, uh, nano heterostructure? How we can say it's a nano structure and people are saying it's a structure. Oh, uh, yeah, the 
here uh, if we say like if the scales are in relatively atomic level we can call it as nano structure because uh, as as shown in this uh, in this in I means in this process we can synthesize this material at very uh, low low scale dimension this is almost as good as 10 nanometer that's why these are uh, nano uh, nano size hetero, hetero heterostructure in this case and as well as the material is uh, form heterojunction at nano scale that's why we call it as heterostructure nano heterostructure okay we'll discuss later on i think it's very interesting work very interesting yes, work. Uh, really yes sir because a uh, lot of a uh, lot many things you have covered in this for this heterostructure their properties and optical properties and all these things yes sir okay thank you thanks thanks for your uh, time thank you now uh, you may leave no problem okay. so you may share the next session yeah uh, now one uh, we have a second lecture from uh, professor moriga is our good friend and he is going to talk on synthesis of photocatalytic properties of uh, tantalum nitrite with inverse opal structure uh, professor moriga uh, uh, is has done a, has done his dad doctor of uh, science means uh, doctor of phd and he is working in uh, working as a professor in faculty engineering at tokushima university his research interests are inorganic materials chemistry several uh, papers of his work were published in uh, reputed international journals he is also the member of several governing bodies of his specialized area he worked as research associate uh, at the faculty of engineering the university of tokushima visiting scholar from uh, northwestern university associate professor in institute of technology science university of tokushima visiting lecturer uh, konamoto university visiting lecturer elim university visiting professor uh, department of science and engineering national taiwan university science of technology he uh, 48 students uh, uh, gra- uh, has been graduated under his supervisor supervisor 30 master students and five phd students so th- currently five phd students are working with him he has published book uh, four uh, four books uh, more than 160 papers he has published and uh, more than 200 in proceedings and more than 300 uh, in national conferences he has 13 patents and he also work on some social activities uh, you know city management like deputy director of center of international cooperation in engineering uh, education then uh, vice dean in april 2014 to 2018 he has many awards the teacher of the year faculty of engineering best teacher in engineering education in uh, global graduation course Uh, best poster award the ceramic society of japan best presentation award the ceramic society of japan so a lot of work he has done in uh, ceramics so and this he is going to talk uh, on today on photocatalytic photocatalysis uh, uh, photocatalytic properties of tantalum nitrite uh, professor moriga uh, yes um, Welcome and after long time we are seeing you. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think we are waiting for you again to India. Oh yeah. I uh, hope to have it your place is as yes, soon as yes. possible. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Uh, so. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for nice introduction, Kare Sensei. So uh, my name is Toshiro Moriga, Tokushima University, Japan. So it's my great honor to be here to give an inviting talk at the INPMA 2022. And I would like to express my sincere thanks to all the members dedicated to INPMA, this conference, uh, especially to uh, Professor Kalam Kanade-sensei. 
Yes. So today I would like to talk about this title, uh, synthesis and photocatalytic property of tantalum nitrate uh, with an inverse of power structure. Yes. Okay. So we moved on the yes text. So okay. Uh, photosynthesis is a process uh, used by plant plant uh, to convert light energy into chemical energies. Uh, this chemical energy is stored uh, in carbon hydrate such as uh, sugar, uh, which are synthesized from carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, uh, and the water. In most cases, uh, oxygen is also released as a waste product. Uh, semiconductor uh, photocatalysis using solar uh, radiation, which can be seen uh, titanium dioxide, uh, represents a promising low energy input technology for hydrogen production from water. The conversion of solar energy to hydrogen by means of water splitting process uh, is one of the most interesting ways to achieve clean and renewable energy. Sorry. Uh, light energy is consumed for excitation uh, of electron uh, from valence band to conduction band uh, in semiconductors. Sorry. But uh, TiO2 uh, uses exclusively uh, uh, ultraviolet rays for artificial uh, uh, artificial uh, technologies. So, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, that means uh, titanium dioxide uh, can utilize only 3%, 3% of sunlight. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so, coconut. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, some trouble, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, to improve the efficiency for hydrogen production, it's necessary to choose a smaller band gap material to enable to achieve the visible light driven photocatalyst reaction. Usually, nitrogen 2P orbital high, have higher potential energy than oxygen 2P, okay? So that the increase in nitrogen uh, content in oxynitride or nitride material results in a higher negative potential of the valence band compared to the uh, that of uh, tantalum oxide and narrowing the band gap, okay? Band gap position indicates the both tantalum oxide and tantalum nitride Tantalum, oxide, uh, tantalum oxynitride, sorry, and tantalum nitride can be used for the photocatalytic uh, water redux reaction. Since both materials, uh, both materials uh, uh, possess band gap energies within uh, visible light energies, yes, uh, from uh, 380 nanometers to around 700 nanometers. So these materials are colored to be yellowish orange or reddish orange, uh, respectively. So uh, for efficient energy usage, uh, we will use the photonic crystal alloys for uh, photonic material in this study. Autocatalytic material, sorry. Autocatalytic material in this study. Photonic crystal can be uh, featured by the periodic structure of material with differing, differing, uh, differing reflective indices. The pitch of the structure is usually chosen such that it is half of the wavelength of the light for which the electron uh, element is uh, designed for. Wow. Typically, photonic crystals used in the visible region are designed and self-fabricated so that the period is about uh, 300 nanometers. Uh, periodic uh, photonic crystal enable to control the optical transmission, uh, reflection, and refraction uh, characteristics using 2D, two-dimensional, and three-dimensional photonic yeah. crystal. It is possible to control the propagation of light at arbitrary instant. Okay, the most widely known example of a photonic crystal is the black reflectors, you know. Okay, when the black reflection occurs at a certain wavelengths, the transmittance of light, incident light, will decrease. 
dramatically in intensity. The position of the band gap in FCC photonic crystal can be estimated uh, using a modified uh, form of Bragg equation. This is a modified form of Bragg equation. Here's uh, an average. An average uh, is a summation of the volume uh, fraction weighted refractive index of all, all the material, including the void. Since colloidal crystal normally expose uh, predominantly 111 planes of FCC crystal, uh, lambda max, lambda max, the wavelengths of the transmittance minimum, that is the position of the photonic band gap, PVZ, can be expressed as these equations. Okay. Okay. So uh, we move to the next section. Uh, certain oxynitrite and nitrides are known as a visible light photocatalysis, as you know. But uh, however, these uh, oxynitrides, these oxynitrides intrinsically uh, possess an abundance of anion vacancy of defect, which acts on electron whole pair recombination centers, hereby uh, these de uh, defects limit the photocatalytic performance. By, uh, but by matching of the PVG location, PVG location, PVG energy, with the absorption edge of semiconductors, electron whole pair recombination would be suppressed. And the photonic cut activity dramatically improved by slow photon effect. I'll explain the uh, slow photon effect later. Okay, okay. Uh, this figure represents a schematic drawing of the simplified photonic band structure. Okay, uh, the strict structure of the photonic crystal. At photon energy approaching from the red side, red side, uh, sorry, <coughs> red side, the group velocity of light uh, decreases and the light can be in uh, increasingly described as a sinusoidal, sinusoidal standing wave that has its highest amplitude in a high reflective material site. Okay, um, high reflective material inside the index part of the structure has the highest amplitude of the standing wave. At the energies uh, above, the band, uh, above the band gap or stop band from the blue side, the standing wave is predominantly localized at the low reflective index part, this part, uh, which is uh, a void or something. These photons with reduced group velocity are termed as slow photons. The photonic band gap position appears at the minimum, uh, sorry, maximum of the absorption spectrum, like this, associated with the red and blue edges at the longer and the shorter wavelength side of the maximum absorption peak. To suppress, uh, sorry, to suppress the electron hole recombination, the uh, absorption edge of the material shown here should match the red edge of the photonic band gap since the electron will be localized at the high refractive index material. Electron in the material can move too hard to recombine with the hole in this case. Okay, so I will show the, uh, this, uh, this pro, uh, presentation, how tantalum nitride TSN5 with the inverse opal structure is fabricated and the, how the position of the photonic band with respect to the absorption edge affect photocatalytic activity of tantalum nitride. Okay. Yes. Very simple purpose. Okay. So let's move on the, uh, to the uh, prep uh, preparation section. We use the colloidal crystal templating technique for the fabrication of the photonic crystal. Monodisperse uh, PMMA colloid spheres were first synthesized by the surfactant-free emergent polymerization, okay? 
、of MMA, metacryl, uh, met, metacrylate, uh, rate, uh, something. Uh, PMMA colloidal suspension was centrifuged, and then the uh, precipitant uh, was collected by filtration. Okay. The filtri uh, filtrated PMMA spheres uh, were dried over the one night. Several drops of tantalum chloride solution were placed softly on the edge of the mass of PMMA spheres and immersed into the mass, like this, uh, into the mass uh, of the PMMA spheres and, uh, sorry, the, by the uh, capillary phenomenon. Subsequently, interstellar void were filled with a tantalum hydroxide zone. Okay, then complex was dried at room temperature for two days and fired at uh, 550 degrees C for three hours, okay? To be burnt off the PMMA colloid, okay? To obtain the porous tantalum oxide with inverse opal structures like this. Nitrogenation of inverse opal tantalum oxide was performed under the ammonia flow uh, at 700 degrees C for five hours to obtain the tantalum nitride, pure phase. Okay, for the transmission spectra uh, measurement, uh, we prepared the thin film of PMMA photonic crystal by uh, flow controlled vertical deposition technique. Five milliliter of PMMA colloid suspension obtained was diluted with the water uh, to a volume of 500 milliliter, which was uh, then poured into a vertical walled uh, glass beaker like this. Glass microscope slide were immersed uh, vertically in the diluted colloid suspension here, after which the period uh, peri peristaltic uh, peristaltic pump slowly removed uh, the colloidal suspension. As the meniscus, uh, at the meniscus, a meniscus of colloid suspension moves down the glass slide like this, and the colloidal crystal of PMMA with thickness of about five micrometer were deposited here like this. The way of uh, pre preparation inverse opal tantalum oxide and tantalum nitride thin film were almost same uh, similar technique using the um, similar technique with those of preparing the powder. And just uh, different uh, here. Okay, we will show. Uh, we uh, yes, you can show the uh, my results. So here shows the result of systematic study of synthetic condition versus uh, PMMA sphere size. Here we have seven samples. Okay, uh, at the polymerization of PMMA, uh, IMMA. We control the reaction temperature, reaction temperature and the MMA volume against the water. The volume uh, of water was fixed at uh, 1600 milliliters. After applying the, uh, sorry, after applying the uh, colloidal crystal templating technique, we obtained high quality of PMMA colloidal crystal with increasing spheres. Sphere size like this one, two, three, four, five. Six. You can see the uh, the uh, radius of the spheres are increasing. The tantalum oxide inverse of power obtained after the careful heat treatment were also lined up neatly, which possessing the increased pore size in this order. You can see the pore, uh, regular pores, yes in seven, uh, now seven numbers. Uh, first one is very small, but number seven is very large. About, uh, you, I'll show you the uh, radius later. Okay. From the SEM image of PMMA opal, this is the PMMA opal and the tantalum oxide inverse opal here. We estimate the regular sphere and the pore size of the opal and the inverse opals. Okay, also, we estimate the photonic band gap wavelengths by using, by using the modified block equation from angle dependent. Angle dependent, uh, this is a 0, 5, 10, 15, something like that. Yes, we change the yes, uh, incident angle 
she ob and finally obtained the uh, transmitter spectra. Uh, we are estimate uh, photonic band gap uh, by using the modified modified uh, modified um, uh, equation black equation. When incident angle change the absorption magnet, you see the uh, changes towards the shorter wavelengths like this. At the uh, angle dependence on lambda max here, towards the exact position of photonic band gap uh, to use this equation. We can calculate it here, okay? PVD here, okay. So we plot the, this data, uh, yes. This is a uh, sphere or pore size dependence of the photonic band gap. Uh, this is for the tantal, uh, sorry, this is for the PMMA uh, photon, uh, opals, and this is a, a tantalum oxide inverse opal. Mm, okay, you can see the uh, almost linear relations between these, them, okay? Okay, so this is a uh, characterization of the PMMA on the inverse opal. So we are going to move the photocatalytic activity measurement section. Okay, uh, photocatalytic tests were conducted under the batch condition like this. Typically, uh, uh, sorry, typically, uh, yes, 10 milligram of the catalyst were loaded into the 200 milliliter pyrex reactor here. Uh, 80 milliliter of uh, water and two milliliter of the methanol as a surface agent, uh, 0 0.2 milliliter of hexachloropratic acid uh, aqueous solution added to the reactor here, okay? And this is followed by the posing with N2 gas under condition, until the condi uh, con uh, continuous storing until the, all the air is removed. As the xenon uh, lamp was used, xenon lamp was used for the photocatalyst uh, and photo deposition of PT onto the catalyst. Yes, uh, hexachloroplatinic acid will be uh, photo deposited on the uh, catalyst. Okay, note that the photo deposition of PT uh, platinum onto tantalum nitride and photocatalytic reaction proceeds simultaneously. Simultaneously in this experimental condition. Sampling was conducted approximately uh, about one hour, every one hour. Product was uh, analyzed using gas chromatography uh, equipped with the thermal uh, conductivity detector and the proper packed cams with N2 as a gas, okay? Yes, this is a uh, cat uh, this is a catalyst here. Uh, no, 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 this, this is a catalyst. This is a PMM template, sorry. Uh, we prepared three tantalum nitride sample with different macro pore size, which are determined by SEM image, you can see. Uh, the largest one is uh, 264 nanometers. Medium one is uh, 216. And the smallest one is 150, uh, 150 nanometers. As a reference sample, Non-porous nitrate powder, a tantalum nitrate powder was also prepared here. All the sample could be assigned pure tantalum nitrate phase as seen in XRD patterns, okay? Yes, the position of platinum uh, as a co-catalyst onto the uh, tantalum nitrate uh, is necessary for hydrogen production. Photo deposition of platinum was conducted under the irradiation of the uh, 100 yeah. watt xenon lamp. No hydrogen production was detected for at least one hour after the start of the light irradiation. Probably because it takes time for uh, hexachloroplatinic acid to be photo reduced and to get supported as a platinum on the catalyst surface, I guess. If we uh, TEM photograph showed that uh, platinum particle with one or two nanometer in size were well dispersed over tantalum nitride powder here. Okay, you see? Okay, 
So we now compare the hydrogen production rate, hydrogen production rate between powder <laughs> and uh, without, uh, uh, with, uh, with, and yeah, without yeah. Photonic crystal structures. This is a, a photonic powder. This is not the uh, non-polar photonic, non-photonic non powder, okay? Hydrogen product rate of non-porous powder was less than uh, half of uh, half that of the photonic crystal powder. Yes. Right. Sorry, yeah. hmm? yeah. It's okay. Okay, okay. Then um, we move to the comparison with the three uh, photonic crystal powder. Hydrogen production rate increased as the macropore size increased. Uh, that means uh, C had the smallest and A had the largest pore size. Uh, you remember? Uh, yeah, he could. Uh, you, uh, I show here. C had uh, 150, uh, B had 216. And D has 264 uh, nanometers. Okay, then the, this is the largest. This is the smallest. Okay, the increased pore size. Increased pore size will lead to the usually uh, decrease the surface area is decreasing. That means the degradation of photocatalytic activity. Usually, larger pore size uh, have a poor poor photocatalytic activity. But uh, in our result, no, inverse. The increased hydrogen production and decreased pore, uh, increased hydrogen production and increased pore size results in decreased surface area. They uh, conflict each other usually, but we think like that. Okay, this figure represents a schematic drawing of the simplified photonic band of structure of the uh, photocrystal as you seen before. Uh, we will check again the location of the both photonic band gap and the absorption edge here. At the red edge, dead edge, group velocity light decreases and the photon can be captured like a standing wave and its highest amplitude is localized in the material part here. At the blue edge, standing wave is predominantly localized in a void part. To suppress the electron hole recombination, the absorption edge of the material should match the red edge of the photonic band gap. It's better, I think. But uh, we estimate the location of photonic band gap, uh, actual photonic band gap in the absorption of spectrum and our sample. In the visible region, in the visible region, uh, absorption edge exists as well as the photonic band gap in the three sample like this. Unfortunately, we are not able to measure, determine the photonic band gap for the uh, each sample directly because of the, their opaqueness. They are not transparent, uh, transparent. So we cannot, uh, uh, at that moment, we cannot uh, determine the uh, exact uh, photonic band gap position. So we calculate the photonic band gap by the black wave equation uh, using the uh, pore size. We adopt the reflect index of tantalum nitrite, uh, usually reported 3.2, and assume that uh, the uh, photonic crystal powder were made of ideal inverse opal structure. Ideal. The void of uh, inverse opal structure was filled with 10% methanol containing water, as shown before. You remember this one? Yes, this one. 10%, 10% uh, uh, methanol in, uh, contain water, okay? And as you should also assume that the photonic crystal powders uh, were aligned randomly, randomly against the incident, right? That is, theta will be ranged from zero to 90 degrees. Yes, randomly aligned. So photonic crystal powder aligned randomly. So we could calculate the estimated photonic band gap for sample with the largest pore A and uh, medias B and smallest pore C, which are tabulated in this one here. For sample A, photonic band gap would exist in the 
painful region, this region. B, this uh, yellow, uh, no, no, <laughs> this is red region, and C, uh, pale green region, okay? So the results seem inconsistent with the con uh, convention concept that red edge slow photon effect has more protocol. Red edge, uh, red edge uh, matching. Uh, slow photon effect is more practical application for the photocatalyst reaction at the, uh, the slow photon direct interact with the matter. This is inconsistent, but we will verify this idea against the result of our uh, experiment. In the sample B, uh, photonic band gap uh, reflects more photon, reflects, reflects, not inside, uh, not inside, put inside, more photons in the red color region a part of which is shorter than the absorption edge yeah, like here uh, in the wavelengths. Namely, many photons with high energy cannot be absorbed by tantalum nitride because the uh, because photonic band gap right here, almost uh, in the, yes, within the absor uh, absorption edge, okay? In case B, Photonic band gap blocks most of the light required to excite an electron from balance band to conduction band. While sample A, the reflect photon, reflect photon in the blue colored region, whose wavelength is longer than the absorption is here, so cannot activate tantalum nitride to generate charge carriers. Namely, uh, photons with high energy can fully absorb by the tantalum nitride photonic crystal. As a result, a sample A with blue edge, yeah, blue edge uh, slow photon effect gave higher, sorry, this, this, this one, gave higher, uh, higher hydrogen production than uh, sample B with red edge, uh, slow photon effect, okay? Uh, uh, finally, I will introduce one paper uh, written by Zhao et al, uh, published in the journal Nano Energies. This paper reports hydrogen production uh, by inverse opal, inverse opal, inverse opal, uh, titania, with uh, three-dimensionally ordered macroporous uh, structure, abbrevi uh, abbreviated, uh, three DOM structures modified by gold, uh, sorry, gold and cadmium sulfide under visible light. Okay. Um, in this composite, titania provides, titania provides the three dimensional order structure for better uh, light penetration and mass transfer. While the cadmium sulfide is a visible light response component responsible component, huh? sorry, responsible component. Gold nanoparticles serve as the electron transfer mediators, like this. Slow photon effect occurred by tuning the macropolar size of uh, photonic crystal skeleton from uh, six, uh, 160 nanometer to 340 nanometers to match uh, uh, photonic band gap and Photonic band here, photonic band here, band gap here, and uh, absorption edge here. Uh, this says uh, uh, 520 nanometers. Okay. Uh, in this figure, blue line, blue line, this one, blue line, this one, this one, this one. Yes, this one uh, depicts the reflectance spectrum of TAC uh, photocatalyst with macroporous uh, size or uh, macropore size of. Uh, this is uh, 250, 250 nanometer, where the blue edge, this is uh, absorbed, uh, no, 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 this is a uh, uh, PBG. Th that means the blue edge uh, of the photonic band gap matched well with the absorption edge of the cadmium sulfide, okay? This figure shows that uh, the TAC TSC photocatalyst possessed the best uh, hydrogen production. Yes, this one, hydrogen production, this one, all right? Uh, ability and indicate photon at the blue edge. Blue edge exhibit much higher, much higher, much higher 
uh, have to cut an activity than the red edge, red edge here, this one. This is the red edge here. This is a blue edge, yes. This is a blue edge matching. This is a uh, uh, red edge matching, yeah. Black one is not so good uh, as a uh, blue one, okay? Okay, uh, so we conclude our uh, results as follows. We successfully found, uh, fabricated tantalum oxide and found nitrogen inverse of our powders by applying colloidal crystal template technique. And priority of the photonic crystal was shown in the photocatalyst test, you see. And results support the idea that it is effect to match the blue edge of photonic band gap with the absorption as in uh, upper inverse upper tantalum nitro photocatalyst. But actually, it's uh, very difficult uh, since the realization of uh, solar photon uh, photocatalytic amplification is very challenging. So it's very difficult. So more precise coupling of PBG blue edge and absorption edge will be needed to verify the effectiveness. Okay, we are now doing here. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, sir, uh, no, sir, I'm, sir, I'm principal Kanade, uh, Professor Kanade. Oh. Yes, yeah, <laughs> thank you very much for uh, giving a very wonderful talk. I, mm -hmm. want, uh, I have some little doubts because mm -hmm. it's very noble material, tantalum oxide is noble, noble material, and mm -hmm. you are preparing that is tantalum nitride. Yeah, yeah, right. And uh, while uh, analyzing these materials, mm -hmm. is there any chances to remain impurity because uh, uh, nitride mm. actually that part decompose uh, while analyzing? Because uh, I have seen your abstract, mm. 550 degrees centigrade, that is, uh, you have particularly analyzed these materials. Mm. This is one, one question. And another one is, uh, the polymethyl metaacrylate. Hmm. The role of polymethyl metaacrylate is it uh, uh, that is useful for geometry uh, to retain the geometry of that particular uh, peroxide? Hmm. Be important for catalytic property. Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, I can't follow your uh, last sentence. Was, um, yeah, because, see, mm -hmm. the peroxide material is very good material for catalytic activity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. that noble oxide. And uh, mm -hmm. while doing this particular uh, oxide to nitride, mm -hmm. you have used this particular uh, one, one material that is polymethyl metaacrylate. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, is it helpful to retain the geometry that particular the materials in nitride or uh, there is no any effects ah uh, you mean uh, uh let's say yes there are yes this nitride is very mm, not so difficult to synthesize to be synthesized so i don't think the this material is noble uh, I mean, what I, I cannot catch you your point. So because of the, uh, the what say? Because the, I have, uh, sir, I have synthesized this material while my uh, mm -hmm. particular research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have used the same methods. What you have used it? That is by analysis method. And initially, I got very that is a dark red material, and mm -hmm. annealing that material later on it becomes a rose red material. Mm. The particular uh, the, uh, nitride, the decomposition of the nitride in mm. tantalum oxide, it mm. remains stable uh, during my work. And uh, I found that you are, you are very good, that is a uh, particular, uh, these materials, and also you have retained the band gap. And that's why the material has become very enthusiastic property in catalytic property. And I'm asking in that way. Uh. Mm. <laughs> uh, um, uh, still, I cannot catch your point. So, uh, some uh, the communicate uh, this um, status is not so good. So, um, what um, sometimes uh, you are freezing <laughs> my 
PC. Okay. So, okay. Mm. okay, okay. And what's about the, that particular uh, the annealing process? Is does it remains pure that nitride? Yeah, I I think so. Yeah. Mm. You you mean you mean uh, my uh, my using uh, tantalum nitride is pure? You yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, Thing in by the XRD in the pure material, no no impurity phase. Yeah, I, I found your XRD is very good, but uh, yeah, that's why. Uh, yeah, it's very difficult. Yes, we try to many times to prepare syn uh, synthesis a uh, pure uh, tantalum nitride, so it takes a long time. But yeah, we yeah. Found the uh, the experimental condition to obtain the uh, single yeah. phase of the. Uh, tantalum nitride. So, yeah, yeah, uh, very, very excellent work. Is there any question from anybody? I think this uh, forum is open for a question answer session. If you have any question, you may ask. We can take a lot of questions from online participants as well as offline participants. So, you can raise your hands if you have any doubt or any query. If there is no questions, anyhow, Professor Morika, because, uh, yeah, may actually we should have to decide to visit on site, but due to this pandemic situation, <laughs> uh, we didn't see that personally to you. And last time we met at Satara. Ah, yeah, I remember. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, that, at that time we enjoyed. Mm, yes, in future, I remember. Uh, yeah, we'll be in touch with you. So thank you, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your kind yeah, attention. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Madam, please close the with a of thanks. Hello. Yeah, yep. you uh, the vote of thanks. I have some questions, sir, from uh, Martha Madam. Martha, there's one more question. Okay. Hello, sir. Being the photo of the design, I understood that you mentioned in your presentation that no photo is there. So will you please elaborate on that point? Hello. Hmm? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. In your presentation, you have mentioned the word of slow photon effect. So, could you please elaborate why you have <laughs> definitely word slow there? Slow. Mm, 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 mm. I'm sorry. Um, I'm I. And I can't hear what you're saying. So, yes, mm -hmm. something uh, I hear, but actually not clearly here. Hello, sir. In oh, your okay, okay, okay. you used the word of slow photon effect. So I didn't understood the significance of slow word there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So will you please elaborate that point? Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. You want uh, you want to see the slide? No. Uh, so you mentioned about the slow photon effect. So uh, why did you mention the slow uh, with photon effect? Can you elaborate on that particular point? <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, mm, mm, uh, I cannot uh, uh, hear you clearly. Mm. Mm? Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, mm, sorry. Mm, yeah, I, oh. I, I understand what you're saying, but actually uh, I cannot mm, hear you. Okay, okay. What do you think we are? Uh, mm. We can have uh, questions, queries from students and we can mail it to you so that uh, you can solve that, uh, that query, sir, via email. Uh, yeah, so uh, there is a echo, so uh, if uh, I cannot hear, so mm, what? Mm. Okay, okay. No, it's just thank you for, for your wonderful... Just to understand, okay, okay, something, yeah. Well, uh, sorry. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation, sir. I take this opportunity on behalf of Anatha Yatsuki Aoki and Professor Morika Sir, to uh, extend a very heartfelt gratitude towards you, uh, Professor, Professor Dr. Toshiro Morika, Professor Tokushima University, Japan, I also take this opportunity to thank Dr. Taisun Kim, Professor at KKU University, South Korea, and the chairperson for this two sessions, Dr. B.T. Kari, Executive Director, Center for Material 
Center for Materials for Electronics Technology, C. Met Pune. So thank you very much, sir. And uh, uh, we will stop here for a lunch break, and we will uh, continue at one thirty p.m. at sharp. Participants are requested to join at one thirty sharply for the next session. We will stop here. We will break here for lunch.